Hi there! In this video, we're going to show you how to get started on using the project template that ships with Ignite UI. Let's check it out. Now the first thing you'll notice about this project template is that it looks a lot like the stock MVC for a project template. This was done on purpose. What we've done is we've taken the stock MVC for a project template and extended it to include Ignite UI straight out of the box for the project. Within the project template, you'll find links to a number of different resources, from application samples to blogs, and even a link to a video series, which shows you how to quickly get up and running with Ignite UI. Working with the Ignite UI gives you an opportunity to work with the controls using straight JavaScript or using the MVC helpers. When you use JavaScript, you have the opportunity to take full control over how scripts are loaded and interact with your page. If you use the ASP.NET MVC helpers, then the JavaScript is generated for you, and you have the benefit of a strongly typed nature within Visual Studio in order to work with the controls. So as you use this project template, you'll have an opportunity to work with those. But for the rest of this video, I'd like to show you what's going on underneath the hood in the project template, so that you'll know what you're getting when you create a project using the template. For that, we'll drop down into Visual Studio. In order to create a new project using the template, let's go to File, New, Project. And then either under Visual C Sharp or Visual Basic, you'll select the Ignite UI node and then select one of the projects. You have the opportunity to choose either ASPX or Razor. For this demo, we'll use the Razor View Engine. Now once the project is loaded, the first thing you'll want to do is build the project to bring in any packages that are required by the project itself. One of the first additions which you'll probably find useful within the project template is the addition of a few API controllers that expose some sample data which are used by pages within the template. This is here to quickly and easily show you how to expose data in your application. Let's start by looking at the IG Customers controller, which is an API controller. Before I show you all the code, let me show you on the browser what's returned from this API controller. Starting at the root of the site, I can type API IG customers, and this returns an object array of customers. Now, this is set up as an API controller, so that when you call get on this API, it goes into the customer repository, call get all on the repository, and then creates response with an HTTP status code of OK, and returns the content type as JSON. Customer repository just creates some objects in memory. Here, it's returning an I enumerable collection of the IG customer type. We chose the name of IG customer so that it wouldn't collide with any customer types that you might be using as you begin to work with this template. This is just building up a number of different objects, adding them into the customers list, and returning that list. Now, if you're watching carefully, you may have seen something interesting happen with that API controller. You'll notice here that the property names are all in lowercase. Now, left alone, those property names sense that a .NET type is being serialized and returned up to the caller. That should be a capital I here for ID and capital I for is active and on and on. So what we've done is add a custom configuration into custom global configuration creating a new contract resolver for camel casing of property names for JSON objects. This benefits you because this gives you an opportunity to make sure that you're following normal JavaScript conventions when working with data on the clients. And it ensures that you can work with normal C-sharp conventions when you're working with objects on the server. Now this is called within the global ASAX and under application start, the customize method of the custom global configuration type is called, and we're passing in the global configuration of the application. Something else to note is that within the Ignite UI folder, you have the folder for the CSS files and JavaScript files, and also the DLL, which is referenced in the application if you want to use the ASP.NET MVC helpers. The customer repository and the types used by that repository for IG customer and IG customer count summary are found within the models folder. There's also a view models folder which holds the view model which is used by the page that uses the MVC helpers. 
Now, here's one last piece of configuration that you might find interesting. When you go into the shared folder, you'll notice the standard underscore layout dot CS HTML file, and then the MVC helper layout dot CS HTML file. These are virtually identical except for one main difference. When you use the ASP.NET MVC helpers, the scripts that are required by Ignite UI need to be rendered at the top of the page. This is because the JavaScript that's implemented in these files are used to compose the page itself. So as you use the MVC helpers, the classes implemented by those helpers will be able to figure out what type of JavaScript you need rendered onto the page. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that the JavaScript dependencies are rendered out onto the page ahead of time. So when you're using the MVC helpers, you use this layout page. And if you're using the JavaScript approach or any other page that doesn't need the MVC helpers, you can use the standard layout page, which renders all JavaScript except for modernizer at the bottom of the page. And there you have it. With this project template and all the other great resources that ship with Ignite UI, you're able to quickly get started on building stunning applications. So that's what's in development. See you next time.